So, uh, welcome everyone. I'm Cindy Johansson. I'm the Executive Director of the George Lucas Educational Foundation and the producer of Edutopia. And we are very excited to be hosting this hangout, uh, this informal Google hangout on air. And uh, Joe Mazza joins us, one of our Edutopia bloggers, one of our esteemed Edutopia bloggers. He's in Helsinki, Finland, with a team of educators. And we decided that this would be a great opportunity to connect on the internet and have an open and we hope transparent dialogue about the unique insights of the Finnish educational system. Alana Leone, our head of social media here at Edutopia, has a couple of tips for the session today. Hey guys, um, I'm gonna kind of be moderating a little bit with the panel and Joe's gonna introduce them in a bit. Um, just a couple of reminders before we get started. Um, we're gonna be using Twitter as a back channel for this conversation. Um, it's the hashtag PenFin13, so that's P-E-N-N-F-I-N-N-13. -N so if you're listening along, um, you won't be able to comment directly via or join in the Hangouts like you might be used to, because this is an on-air Hangout, but you can join the conversation via Twitter. And um, Joe actually has that tweet chat up about behind his background, so we're going to be able to see him stream live. And that's it. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, Cindy's going to introduce Joe and then the panel, and we'll get started in Helsinki, Finland. Great. Um, and so I, I mentioned that Joe is a blogger, and Joe, I'm one of your fans, so it's nice to meet you during the hangout here. Um, Joe is a lead learner at Math Elementary School in Lansdale, Pennsylvania, and he's in the final stages of his doctoral studies at the University of Pennsylvania, completing a dissertation on social media's impact on school-family partnerships. Joe is also a regular moderator of the PT Chat on Twitter, Parent Teacher Chat. Parent Teacher Chat. Sorry, it's 9 a.m. here on the West Coast. Um, so without further ado, Joe, I'll turn it over to you. All right, welcome everyone. We're really, really um, excited about uh, this opportunity. We, uh, our team of nine uh, educational leaders from the University of Pennsylvania arrived here in Helsinki, Finland on um, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, so we've been here about 72 hours. Uh, we haven't done a lot of sleeping because we've done a lot more thinking and writing and sharing and talking uh, with each other. Um, today we visited uh, the second school um, of, uh, of our week. On Monday, we uh, were here at the Teacher Education uh, Center here at the University of Helsinki, and I'd first like to start by thanking um, uh, the University of Helsinki for providing us this venue today. Um, this is probably the most, the, the coolest educational technology um, uh, arena I've ever been in, so it's really cool to just ask um, one day, and um, an hour later you get an email saying, no problem, we fully support um, anybody trying to help kids, and, and that's really been the theme since we uh, arrived here uh, in Helsinki. So we're really excited. Um, I'm going to introduce the folks um, in the room as soon as we um, introduce the panel. Um, we have students in here, teachers, administrators, uh, parents in the room, and we also have uh, those uh, eight other uh, educational leaders from the University of Pennsylvania is joining in in our conversation. So, um, I think Elana will start uh, on the left-hand side with um, Mr. Eric Scheninger. He, if he could introduce himself and go right across uh, the lane at the bottom. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Eric Scheninger. I'm the principal at New Milford High School, which is in New Jersey, about 10 minutes outside uh, New York City. Hi, everyone. I'm Scatori, the mom of three. Uh, from Knapp Elementary School outside of Philadelphia, Lansdale, Pennsylvania. Hello everybody, uh, Josh Stumpenhorst here. I'm a parent of two, but I'm also a junior high uh, English and history teacher in a Chicago suburb. Hi everyone, my name is Kristen Swanson and I am a teacher coach and curriculum designer uh, with Understanding by Design. Hello everybody, this is Rich Piker. I'm also outside of Philadelphia. I'm the Director of Online Learning at Cal State School District in uh, Kindersville, Pennsylvania. I'm sitting here with some of our other administrators, Dr. Bridget O'Connell, the Superintendent of Schools, and Mr. Richard Ackerman, who is the high school principal. And all of us are most interested in being like Joe Mazza, so the more we can learn about Joe today, the better. <laughs> 
Uh, hey everyone, um, this is Vicki Davis. I am a teacher at Westwood Schools in Camilla, Georgia. I have three children. I blog at the Cool Cat Teacher blog and I just want to celebrate excellent teaching wherever it is. We actually write about Finland in our book, Flattening Classrooms with Engaging Minds. So I am dying to ask some questions. Thanks. Great, and I know we have a couple people that are chiming in. Todd Whitaker um, has uh, he'd like to join us too. He's trying to get in as well as Zach Malamed. Uh, Zach is the leader of the student voice movement here in the, or over there in the United States. What I'd like to do right now um, is uh, I'm going to bring the mic and the camera right on over um, to our panel here in, in the room and they're going to introduce themselves and their role in working for kids. So Alana, let me know if you can hear me okay. <laughs> Might want to do a sound check really quick. Checking one, two, three. How's that? Perfect. Okay. Hi, I'm Susan Feibelman. I am um, part of the Pin Fin 13 team coming from Greensboro, North Carolina, where I'm head of upper school at Greensboro Day School, and also along with Joe, finishing up our doctoral work in the mid career program at Penn's um, Graduate School of Education in Career. Happy to be here. Curious about how leadership is enacted in our schools in Finland, what we can learn as educational leaders in the United States from our Finnish colleagues. Hello there, everybody. My name is Olli Matta. I'm a teacher trainer, the head of international relations at the uh, Helsinki Normal Museum, which is a teacher training school at the University of Helsinki. And I had the privilege to, to host this Penfin group on their second uh, day of their visit uh, to my school. And I'm really happy about to be invited to this event tonight. So, nice to meet you all. Hello everyone, my name is Brandon Wiley and I'm based in New York City. I'm the uh, director of Asia Society of International Studies Schools Network. It's a network of 34 schools around the United States that are preparing students to be globally competent and college and career ready. Uh, I also am a student at Penn. I'm finishing up my doctoral work. And uh, for those of you who are really fans of Joe, I've been his roommate for the last three years. So I'd be happy to tweet out some secrets and uh, <laughs> some other things you might think differently about him. But it's been a pleasure to be here. And I've been focusing on uh, student voice and ways in which students are engaged uh, in their learning here in Finland. I'm so glad I can mute whenever I want to. Okay. <laughs> I look forward to that tweeting. I'll wait till I do. Um, my name is Mike Johannik. I'm on the faculty at the University of Pennsylvania. And I have the great pleasure of uh, directing the, this program with these wonderful colleagues and school leaders from around the US. Uh, which means, of course, we all ultimately just work for Joe. But other than that. Um, <laughs> and we look forward to uh, uh, learning uh, more about the Finnish system. And in particular, from my vantage point, um, the role of leadership of schools relative to the other agencies uh, and organizations in Finnish society. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Timo Ilomaki. I'm a teacher and a counselor in, from Jyväskylä City uh, in high school. I'm also a project leader in iPads in high school projects, so interested in technology in high schools. I see many friends from Twitter, so <laughs> nice to meet you. So Joe invite us here and uh, we are pretty happy to be here. Hello all, my name is Aki Pustinen and I come from uh, Middle Finland, Murame. <laughs> and uh, I'm a headmaster of uh, Murame High School and I'm also coordinating uh, Finnish entrepreneurship and social media networks in high schools. And I got a part-time job uh, in uh, University of uh, Jyväskylä, having an education, institute of educational leadership. And uh, 
uh, my interests are also social media and uh, uh, entrepreneurship and uh, business studies. And thank you, Timo and Aki. You drove three hours just to be here tonight for a conversation. Yeah. Um, so we're really happy that you're here. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. It's not distance at all for <laughs> Finns. <laughs> <laughs> Honored to be here. Uh, I'm Paul Solars. I'm a fifth grade teacher in Arlington Heights, Illinois. Um, I've come here looking at 21st century skills um, and technology use in the Finnish school system. Hi, I'm Marty Richmond. I work at an independent school in New Jersey, a high school called the Lawrenceville School. I am a proud alumna of the mid-career program. Um, I'm also a trained school psychologist. Um, my background is special education. I run a learning center for our students. Um, and I also teach a course in student qualitative research where we train students to have research skills so that they can investigate important issues that they feel in their lived lives at our school and make recommendations to the faculty um, and our headmaster about school change. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Kaven Yi. Uh, I am from uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, I teach at a progressive uh, independent school called the Lowell School. Um, I'm the science curriculum coordinator and the middle school uh, advisory program chair. Uh, about three years ago, I was asked or was invited to uh, help start the middle school division at, uh, at Lowell. And uh, prior to that, I spent uh, 12 years uh, working in Winneka, Illinois, uh, at Carlton Washburn School, teaching uh, seventh and eighth grade science. And that's where actually I went, met Joe. So I'm actually the person that knows Joe the longest here. <laughs> and uh, if you uh, to jump on the Joe bandwagon, uh, I love him too. And if you'd like anything, I could sell stuff on eBay for you. <laughs> <laughs> Nice to meet you. My name is Maria Puolakainen, and uh, I am a student at SYK, the school that this team visited today. They actually came to my calculus class and asked me to come, so I said yes. <laughs> and I don't know, I'm probably here to give some student insight. Um, I've, I started school in the U.S. In, in Seattle, so I did my first few years of school there and then moved back to Finland, so it's really nice to meet you. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Varone Kennedy. I am the principal of the Riverton Street Charter School, which is in St. Albans, Queens, New York. Um, I am presently uh, starting, uh, unlike Joe, Joe is finishing up, but I'm starting my doctoral work at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, I am so happy to uh, be a part of this uh, group who, is, who have come out here to uh, actually uh, just look at the wonderful things that are happening here uh, in Finland. Um, my particular focus uh, is around um, uh, uh, around collaborative learning and um, looking at um, looking at the, the how people actually engage together, how teams work together uh, in order to um, uh, increase student achievement. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Jennifer Abasso George. I'm from Northern Vermont, and I am an assistant superintendent in a rural school district about 3,000 students. I'm here with Penn, I'm a doctoral student, and I'm interested in rural school governance. And thank you everybody for allowing this opportunity. Hello, my name is Elis Zetkanen. I'm an applying trainer, 15 year old from the same school as Maria, and I'm here to give a student's opinion. Hello everybody, um, my name is Adam Ashton. Joe, is that the end of your panel now? That's everybody. <laughs> okay. Um, Joe, do you mind if I, I kick it off um, to our panel for a question to your panel? Absolutely. All right. Um, Vicki, can you hear us okay? Yes, I can. Uh, I'm you you did, I have a um, I'm very interested. I'm not sure I got his name um, correct. Uh, Aki? 
He uh, researches media and social networks in high schools in Finland. I'm very interested to know how you're using media and social networks in high school. Could you share with us? If I got right, uh, do you me meant uh, how we use the social media in high schools? Correct. How are you using social media in high schools today? For example, uh, we have 24 Finnish high schools in this uh, network. Uh, we use uh, every school has a Facebook site to have more communication with the students, and it's important if we think in an entrepreneurial way uh, to, to get the voice of our students and our uh, um, clients to uh, to heard, and uh, of course we are coordinating the whole the whole system with Facebook, using Twitter, uh, having all kinds of uh, social media free tools to test and work in the schools. And uh, so, and of course we have two meetings uh, every, every school year because it's important to share the uh, knowledge and the things uh, we have learned in, in separate schools. Are Facebook and Twitter allowed in school or do they have to go home to use those tools? Uh, uh, we are presenting, pre presenting uh, high school so the students are 16 to 19 years old so it's no problem. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Kristen, do you want to start off with another follow-up question? Yes. Um, what I'm really wondering about is this, this concept of assessment and how it's different in Finland from the United States. And really the question that I have for the panel is this idea of what do you feel is the most important information that you give to your learners uh, and what do they do with that information? Joe, you want to direct that question yep. to someone in particular? Yep. I'm going to send that one over here to Oli. He is the teacher trainer. I would love to have a student maybe answer that question as far as what they feel the most important pieces of information they get about their learning are on a, from teachers on a daily or weekly basis. All right, we'll go to the student and then we can come back to uh, Oli. We lost. Oh, so, your question was concerning uh, what was the most important information received uh, as a, like receiving as a student from the teacher, and in my opinion, um, well, it varies a lot on different subjects naturally, but the fact that we kind of deal with stuff uh, during like through problem solve problem based learning. So if I have a problem, I can go talk to the teacher about it and he can help me out with it. And I, that's probably how I learned the best. I mean, by making, I know it's a cliche to say that by making make mistakes, you learn. But honestly, when you have, a, like, if you make a mistake and you have that kind of negative emotion attached to that, uh, making a mistake, then I will remember what, I, what mistake I made forever and therefore learn really well. So kind of dealing, dealing with the teacher on a personal level in that sense. And also I find that at the end of the class, if the teacher is uh, able to effectively summarize what would be done during that class, is also really effective. I'm going to send that over to Oli Mata, and he is a teacher trainer um, at uh, the Normal Lyceum School, Helsinki, who, and we visited that school yesterday. So you want to pick up uh, where she left off. Thank you, Maria. I, I think she's summarized quite well the, the actual cooperation between a student and, and a teacher regarding the information given by a teacher and how, how it is understood by, by a learner, by a student. Uh, going back to the question, I, I, I remember um, her asking also about uh, assessment uh, in relation to uh, the contact between a, a learner and a, and a teacher. And um, when Maria was summarizing the, 
the, the, the cooperation between a teacher and a student, how, how, that's, how that is made most effective, what, are, what, what parts of the information is helping the learner to learn more. I would love to continue that in the respect of, of assessment, that whenever we give uh, a student, a learner, an individual, the feedback, it's only towards this personal progress that this individual has, has made, or whether she or he has made it. Not comparing, not competing, not having a competition inside the classroom, but helping this individual to make progress and give him or her feedback in that process. That's how the evaluation assessment is working in, in this country. Thank you, Kristen. Alana, what I'd like to do is just kind of... I'm going to go ahead and ask another panel, since we've got so many of them down here. Um, Josh, do you have a question handy that you want to ask your student or somebody on the panel? Um, yeah, I'm trying to quickly remember who was on the panel, what role was... was, was where, which one were the teachers within the system? What? Were there teachers on the panel? Because the question I have kind of relates to the teacher-administrator relationship and the in uh, the level of accountability and using test scores and evaluations. I just kind of wondered how the teacher evaluation system worked in that relationship between as an administrator, as a manager, or as that kind of lead learner, uh, as, as Joe, you know, and then some of the administrators in our panel really do demonstrate. But what is that kind of, that role of the, uh, the administrator in evaluating and also um, kind of professionally developing teachers? If that makes any sense. <laughs> Could you show a little bit? Shorten that. Yeah, shorten that question. What was it? I think what Josh is um, trying to get at. What role does the, uh, the building administrator or principal uh, have in developing or um, helping improve the quality of teaching, the teachers themselves? Okay. Well, as you, as you know, uh, we have a big autonomy with, with each teacher, so he or she, she can decide uh, how he teach in his classroom and, and how the role of the principal is to uh, try to de develop the possibilities for teacher to make the best way uh, in his uh, teaching. Uh, principal role is also provide uh, uh, education, uh, uh, fulfillment education for teacher if she, Needs that, but uh, but I think the uh, the role the roles are pretty. In my career, in 14 years, uh, uh, no, not once my my principal had said that Timo, you can do you cannot do that. So we have a lots of freedom to to do and develop anything we just interested. And I think that. Uh, my job as a school leader is to, to, to uh, enlarge uh, leadership in our schools. And it's, I think it's concerned uh, teachers, students, all the staff, uh, that they have more leadership in their, uh, in their position, if they are leaders or teachers, whatever. And uh, I think in Finland, the student uh, leadership is in, in a good shape uh, that uh, this will uh, help uh, all those matters. So you're so as an administrator, you're really trying to foster that leadership being built within your teachers, but also within your students. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you mean how how yeah, we do it? it. Oh, that's it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not just driven by the administrators, by the leaders, but actually the students and the teachers have a role in being leaders and what's best for the learning of each kid. Yeah, a big role. Okay. Great, so I think I'm gonna kick it off to um, Gwen, who's kind of next up in the line. Gwen, do you have a, a question from the parents perspective? Yes, I have a question. Um, uh, the last couple of days, you've talked a lot about the whole trust issue in um, Finland and with the schools and the parents and the students. My question is, is the trust um, 
Do the parents trust the schools so that they are removed and they don't, they don't participate? Or is it just that they don't question the process? perspective uh, why why is trust so um, embedded in the Finnish society and, and regarding uh, our history uh, when we had to as, as a community as a country as a nation to fight for our uh, independence to fight out for our existence to find together a solution where the country was united after a very bloody uh, uh, civil war, not uh, more than uh, less than 100 years ago. So the country united together towards a common goal has still its traces in our educational system. We're able to realize that, that education being one of those means where the united country can really lift up its head and, and had regained a position in, in this world where, where uh, educated citizens of the country are united towards a common, common goal. So parents and all stakeholders in, in our society are uh, confident in the fact that school is doing its share and parents don't question the, the role uh, of schools uh, and the, the work that is done at schools and uh, when when we are able to to also realize as parents that our kids are happy they are uh, learning they are um, doing what they are supposed to do and also that that we realize as parents and teachers and, and as a community inside the school that this trust is something that happens throughout the school days and we're able to see that, that school really is working as it should. Joe, do you want to have one more person answer that question, or do you want me to move on to the panelists? Yeah, actually, Alana, I would like to throw it over to um, one of our uh, colleagues at the University of Pennsylvania, Jen, and she. I, I think we need to just set a little bit of a backdrop um, in terms of relating to you know some of the responses uh, and kind of embed what we've seen over the last two days to try to have some examples in relating to that. So um, I'm going to push it over to Jen. There weren't, here's a, a, an A, a B, and a C level problem, now let's practice a hundred of them. They were real life problems. And the notion is that the, the Finnish students are independent and they're thinkers, and they need to solve the problems. A second example is in the chemistry class yesterday, the teacher had written the textbook. And so here we have, it's very local, it's very known and understood, and they're intellectual thinkers who are teachers who are writing and, and, and in the forefront of their academic discipline. Uh, another area is, Today, after the calculus class, um, the, the principal came and spoke with a student who was the president of student council, and they, you know, they had a conversation, and it was on a first name basis, and they were very pleasant with each other. And then afterwards, I asked about the issue, and, and it was an issue about you know, something in the school. Were, were it at my high school, I would have experienced some sort of body language tension about the topic. But it was very comfortable, and there's this 
this level of the students are their own thinkers and believers, and, and that's one piece. And then the faculty respect. We visited two schools where they, just the, the physical space that the adults have, um, and the coffee that's available, and, and the comfortable um, respect for here's some books to read, here's a space where you can meet and congregate. And, and so you have this whole other lens of all these small things you can do that, that we have seen that make a huge difference collectively on, on trust and respect for the faculty and students and learning and, and academia. And that's it for now. Okay. You we want to have one more student respond uh, um, on that topic as well, on the trust. On the trust, yeah, sure. Uh, I previously mentioned that I attend the IB program. In, a, in our school, the IB program is very small. We have about 25 students per year, so we take all our classes together and get to know each other very well. So um, in turn, we also know our teachers very well. We have, I find, a really unique opportunity to um, have this very kind of a really personal relationship with the teachers. Like for some, um, the, on the trust issue, for instance, one time our French teacher said, oh, like I have this meeting, like do you mind having class by yourselves? So she left us a few oral exercises and a video to watch and a few like, like, dis like topics to discuss. And we sat there for an hour and a half conversing amongst ourselves, and we're about six students in my French class. That sort of trust I really value as a student. The fact that a teacher is comfortable enough to leave us alone in the classroom, has full confidence in us that we are able to do this thing by ourselves and, and still like, learn from it, uh, is really valuable in my opinion. Um, more on the trust, um, I guess just in the classroom we are it's, we are already expected to act a certain way. I mean, the baseline of treating a student is not, oh, you're a student, you're going to misbehave and you're going to uh, like disrupt the class, but it's, oh, you're a valuable learner and I want to hear what you have to say. And as a, as a pupil, as a student, the fact that there's also respect um, between teachers and students is very valuable in my opinion. Great. Um, Joe, if you don't mind, I'd like to move on to another question, if that's all right. Or do you have anybody in the panel that you feel like needs to answer it again? Go ahead, Alana, go ahead. No? Okay. Um, I guess before we go to Eric, I wanted to address one of the biggest uh, critiques of Finland, per se. I mean, we recently just launched a video on the education system in Finland and heard it, and like Vicky was in the chat talking about a lot of people won't even listen to what the success of Finland has been because they just feel like it's, it's not applicable. It's a homogenous society. It's a completely different world. So are, are there pieces that people can address that can be practical where if I'm a teacher um, listening right now, are there things that I can do that can be part of what Finland's doing and try to replicate that success? Maybe just talk about how you got there with the success and that kind of misconception of what Finland is. So I'm actually going to take this one as, as one of the observers here this week. Um, you know, this notion that as a homogeneous community, that there isn't a lot of diversity, that you know, they're a small country, some of these misnomers, I think, that this, this type of learning can't be replicated. I think we're finding some evidence this week that um, that may not be true, actually. We, we've seen diversity here. We've seen diverse learners. We saw students today that struggled and asked for help. We've seen um, you know, different levels of courses that they provided to be able to differentiate for students and what their needs are. So the truth is their kids have looked every bit like our kids do. Um, and we're, at, we're in a city. We're in a city where you know, students have um, obstacles that they have to overcome to get to school and, and to be here. So I think some of that uh, needs to be set aside and instead to look at the structures that they have put in place to enable their teachers and their, their students to be successful. This notion of trust doesn't happen by mistake. Um, it happens very intentionally, I think, through the relationships that teachers form, through the expertise that teachers develop. Um, we spent a good part of our day um, 
yesterday and the day before learning more about the teacher preparation program uh, here in the country. And I think there's a lot that the United States can learn from the way in which teachers are, are trained here, the, the high caliber, the expectations. Uh, we met quite a few teachers, in fact, that have proceeded on to get their doctoral degrees. You know, education is, is just valued very highly here. And so I think the challenge for us as a country in the United States is to think about how do we help shift some of that culture um, that, that might exist in some communities where education isn't valued as much, um, where, where teacher expectations, um, just actually I hope today you'll see a blog post that I've written that will go on Edutopia about this notion about trust and whether or not we in the United States actually do trust our teachers and do the systems that we've put in place around teacher evaluation, uh, are they actually eroding some of the trust that exists in our communities or uh, are, are they actually helping teachers, which I think is the intent. So, you know, I think we can set aside some of this notion that their kids are different, their community is so different that we couldn't do these things in the United States. I think part of it takes some intentionality um, that we perhaps haven't seen. That's a great point. Um, Joe, do you have anyone else that wants to address that or should I move on? You can go ahead, Alana. Okay. Hey, Eric, do you have a question from the principal perspective you want asked? I kind of have a question more looking at the entire education system as a whole. Okay. You know, what do you see as major challenges to the success of the Finnish education system? I think that the uh, big challenge, of course, in, in nowadays and uh, Europe in, in, in the mess is also the money and uh, the issue of uh, private schools. Should we stay in, in our public sector system? I think it's a uh, valued thing itself and, uh, of course, some uh, areas, the schools, for example, the high schools uh, will have this lack of money because the e-examination will come, matriculation examination will come in the following three years. So, but the basic, in, in the basic school and high schools, I think is in a very good shape. And it's worth of uh, <laughs> sharing and uh, you, you using, uh, not, not changing so much. But the, the foundation is, is the basic found is uh, so firm that we should merely go with this way, like ch do a lot of changes. As an outside observer, um, one thing that I've gotten from the university professors or even speaking to Posse Salberg the other day is that one of the challenges that he feels is the, this, actually this fame, this, su this sudden popularity of the Finnish system. He's been saying, he says that this system has been set in place for a, 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 a number of years. They've been doing it this way for a long, long time. And that this attention from the world is actually um, having uh, fellow, uh, uh, Finnish teachers and uh, Finnish communities like start uh, reflecting on themselves like oh are you know how are we do, do we need to improve are we the best do we need to improve and and he's saying that this, some of these uh, these internal questions now are becoming more of a challenge uh, for the system. Oli wants to speak. yesterday regarding those challenges. I would like to add to, to the fact that, that you mentioned regarding this fame and, and Finland in a way um, being lifted up as a paragon for the whole world in educational matters. Uh, if we look deeper 
to that that we actually don't deserve this role of being the educational leader or the best system of the world because there is always things that, that can be improved. There is things that can be done well or have been done well in every country. There are very devoted teachers in every educational system and, and we shouldn't diminish their role and, and their effort uh, when somebody else has been successful. So Finnish people are still seekers, we're still we're willing to improve and I think that's the, the most important challenge also put to us Finns that we realize the fact, as Kevin was saying, is there something to, to be better at? Is there still a room for improvement? Is there still room for developing this, this system to another level? And at that point we're reach, reaching uh, or, or coming to a point where, where the challenges are, are common, they are shared by, by all educational systems in the world. Who owns the knowledge? Who has the monopoly in learning? Uh, what, how do teachers' roles change when we're seeing so many different competitors uh, providing knowledge, processing knowledge, uh, schools are not the only place where you can learn. How to make the learning community wider. How to, to actually engage our students when there are so many other enticing things in this world to do. How to make learning an effort and really struggle with your learning. Something that is desirable, that is important. That's, that's something that I, I see as a challenge. On the Finnish setting, as you often said, we're facing these economic setbacks, we're facing these difficulties, how to finance, how to find money for, for those improvements that are needed, not only looking at equipment, iPad schools, because there are great differences in, in this country, how money is delivered and how it's allocated. Great. Um, Joe, I'm going to move on to the next question. Before I get over to Rich or Zach, um, we crowdsourced some questions on Edutopia's Facebook page, and we got over 150 questions. I'm not going to ask you all of them, but one question had 36 likes, so it was our, our high winner. So I want to paraphrase it a little bit. It's from an educator from Georgia and in the United States here. Her name is Dodi Von Price. And basically, she says that Finnish schools have made a tremendous turnaround in less than a decade. But what do teachers, or what does this panel um, from Helsinki feel has been the most, um, the, the most significant factors to the success? If you can, then point it to one. And then actually, um, we're chatting over on the panel, so chatting on the side, and Josh brought up a really good point. Is, is it the culture around Finland that's really helping this education system thrive, or are we really just looking at, a, at the education system as a whole succeed, or is it a combination of both? So that's a two-part question. <laughs> Making it in. Did I get the question right? The most eminent fa factor, like describing our success. Yes. Yeah, I mean, if you had to think about, you know, think thing. about your success and think about what, what's, you know, what was the most significant part of that success? If you had to pick one thing per se, and maybe you can't, and maybe you say it's a combination of X and Y, but if, if I had to, to just pick one thing. I would then give credit to our comprehensive school, just one, one and only thing. But then trying to describe this uh, renewment or renewal that we made in 1974, or actually started even earlier, that we got rid of our segregated school system where we had different pathways uh, available for kids that somebody thought would be more more clever than the others so we weren't we weren't giving equal opportunities 
to a, a lot of our youngsters who actually were noted to be as uh, capable of learning as anybody else, but they were given the, possi given the possibility. So this notion of equal opportunity and providing equal possibilities for everybody is the most and only significant, in a way, achievement uh, resulted by, of course, a, a, a large set of different types of actions that we realize uh, in Finland happening in a different way compared to other countries. And respect for teachers is, is one thing, that teachers are valued. The structures in teacher training, looking at, at the Finnish system where uh, we still have this unique teacher training network uh, providing practical teacher training combined with a strong research base combined with the universities is something that that nearly, nearly really needs to be credited in, in the Finnish setting. I, I, I don't want to take too much of the air time because I have colleagues here and also uh, students who might want to, in a way, comment on that fact. Okay, I agree in, with Oli in many things, and I think the big thing was uh, uh, the teacher training, get, get the full plan teacher training, and, uh, and after that, I think many things uh, changed. Uh, the society is uh, also uh, really positive about the education. That, so, so that's why it's not the system, it's the whole culture, as someone asked, I think, which is, uh, which is really uh, feel that we should do really good education in, in, in this small country that we could manage. So these are my structures, my medicines. <coughs> I think also that uh, the, the, what sort of people we get to teach us, if there are good persons, because basically the teaching is person to person. And uh, it could be that some youngster, that uh, the, the teacher is the only adult contact for him or her per day. It's important that uh, this person and, and those persons are clever and uh, doing their job very well and uh, is it's a person it's a teacher who and the person and the teams make, make the teams and make the schools also one thing came to my mind uh, i'm a student counselor in high school so mm -hmm. my job is to make them uh, career counseling for for the students and if we uh, measure the students who are going to university, uh, example, my students, uh, so if you want to be a doctor, lawyer, teacher, they are in the, in the same, same line. The academics are in the same line. There is something like doctor is here and teacher is here. So that's, I think that's really important thing now, nowadays. In my town, uh, uh, teacher uh, in university, uh, one tenth students get in to university as become as a teacher. So there are lots of people, motivated students, lying to be a teacher. So that's one thing that society have taught them that it's very good profession to be a teacher. So that continues also. <clears throat> and one point uh, it, uh, occurred to me that if we uh, have only the PISA results, only the one, one card, it's in a very narrow <laughs> uh, system because also there are Finland a lot of uh, good education system, technology, uh, high schools, basic schools and uh, of course the t teacher training, but it's a very wide one. And one more thing, <laughs> in my school we, I almost never heard talks about PISA. So we are talking about learning, not PISA results, so that's one thing.
You can probably just leave it. Or you put the next one. Sure. Oh, uh, oh. Um, Joe, we have like about three to five minutes, so I want to try to get to Rich and Zach, but um, of the two of you guys, one of you guys want to arm wrestle to go first? <laughs> Anyone have a, a dying question they need to ask first? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm comfortable with you making a statement, if that's okay. I, you know, I want to let everybody there know how challenging this is. This conversation is wonderful to have. I'm sitting here with Dr. O'Connor and Rich Hockman and other administrators in our district. We're getting text messages from other administrators around the state of Pennsylvania right now asking us about uh, what's happening right now and emails and, and tweets and everything following this conversation. And that ties into this idea of connected learning and just what we're doing here. Kristen's with us today. Kristen Swanson, she talked about taking stuff that we know how to do and actually using it and putting it into practice. And um, that's what we're doing here. Uh, in America, we look at education as a right. I know Finland does it as well. It's a, it's a citizen's right. Uh, but we've not yet reached the place in this country where connected learning is a right. Connected learning is still a privilege in many locations in the United States. And we don't have um, the value on this type of collaboration that we need. And I'm curious to hear what your take is on connected learning, the value of uh, global confidence, and things that we're doing here as professionals, few students, but putting this kind of technology in the hands of our learners. So it is a question. <laughs> I guess it is now. <laughs> and Joe is still my hero. I don't care what anybody says. Rich, <laughs> Rich, this is Joe. While we're thinking about that one, I definitely want Zach to be able to ask his question since we're running out of time. And he represents Student Voice in the United States, and it's a, a huge effort, and he's doing a lot of work. So while we're thinking about the answer to your question, Rich, I'm going to ask Zach to maybe talk to some students here and, and have his questions answered. Thank you, Joe. Uh, you know, as, as a student, I like to think of myself as an idealist. Uh, but even then, uh, Finland's education system seems to be more like a utopia to me. And 
you know, I, I think the, the biggest difference between the United States education system and the education system is the idea of trust. And a part of trust is, is student voice and student engagement. So Brandon and, and Maya, I know you both have experienced both the United States education system and now to at least some extent understand uh, the Finnish system. So I want to have a better understanding of uh, the compa comparisons uh, between the utilization of student voice and student engagement between both systems. Oh. <clears throat> Your would you like to rephrase that question a bit more sure. narrow, maybe? <laughs> so sure, so my, you know, with your experience in the American education system, and now, you know, the Finnish education system, how, have, how do you feel like, I guess, in the Finnish education system, it seems like the student voice is much more valued. So how, how do you see uh, the, the, the trust in you as a student to differ from that from the United, your experience in the United States system? How do you think your voice is more valued, or not? Well, I found that when I'm in the class situation, my voice is extremely valuable because I find that everyone in the class, the pupils, I mean, my, my peers and the teacher, are genuinely interested as to what I have to say. Um, in the class situation, like, for example, history class, we don't necessarily talk about what happened, but we talk about why it happened, and therefore we get to throw around a lot of ideas. And the fact that the teacher lets us do that is just proof that he is generally interested as to how we think and how we arrive at certain conclusions. Uh, when I was in the States, I was quite young. I mean, I was six to eight years old. But um, I still remember that going to, what, first, second grade, it was a lot of like, um, it was surprisingly a lot of exercises for quite young children. I mean, I remember I was quite a dynamic child, so I was very into like, you know, like interactive learning and going outside and playing a lot. So I was maybe a bit frustrated with like just sitting down for many hours at a time at age six to do that many exercises, I guess. So in that way, I find that it's a bit different, but um, I do find that going to elementary school in the U.S. was a great experience because um, the American way of valuing each student is also, I find, very valuable. So. I don't know, I think there's good and bad on both sides. They're just very different, I suppose. Brandy, you want it? Okay. Um, Zach knows that he and I have spent a lot of time talking about this notion of student voice. So Zach, this, this week's for you. I've been really drilling at questions with students on this. Um, I think one of the things that has, has struck me the most is students talk a lot the last couple days about their ability to talk with their teachers about the learning in the classroom. So teachers asking for feedback from the students about what's working, what isn't working for them, how they would like to be assessed, having some choice. I think that, that's really, really, to me, the ultimate example of student voice. I think we can talk about a lot of other things around the edges about helping to plan events in school. And, but, but I think when it gets to the core, and, and, and we spoke yesterday actually about this idea of it being something that isn't uh, just structural that happens once in a while, but an everyday thing. How do we make it so that it's ingrained in what happens in the school? So uh, I'm going to be writing about this in the next couple days, and hopefully I can give some more concrete examples. But um, you know, I think the other thing I would just say quickly is that we've learned about the, the Finn culture and about the fact that they are not perhaps the most outgoing, effusive uh, people, that, that they are a little more reserved, that they are a little bit more stoic. And so this notion of being out there, uh, as, as some of our students might be, is actually culturally a little bit different. But I think what we've also learned is that the younger generations, I think, are perhaps changing that notion and are, are, are pushing on this idea that they want to be more active, they want to be more visible and take action in their communities. So, so I, I think we have some good examples of that. To that. We have one more comment. Yeah, I want to piggyback on what Brandon was saying and some of the observations we've made. Um, on top of that, I, I, for student voice, I really feel that the environment that the schools that we visit have created really supports that. Um, every student feels <laughs> like they can take a risk. I, I, I observed a fifth grade class today. Uh, pres, uh, Dancing and singing and presenting this, uh, dramatic, these dramatic skits that they self uh, that they uh, they wrote by themselves in language arts class, 
and they were all like they were not shy at all to to perform in front of their peers. There were about 90 fifth graders sitting in that room, actively listening, paying attention, and then applauding when appropriate when everyone was finished. It, it was just the environment to take risks, to be allowed to say what they want to say, express themselves, and show their unique identity is what I feel that has been really special in, the, uh, in what I've seen here. And it's really the environment that the teachers and the administrators have created. Um. <laughs> um, I'll just say I did my dissertation on looking at schools who are relational and, and just to support what you just said. Um, I know cognitively that when kids feel safe, and one of the things Posse talked about in only yesterday about removing the structural barriers in school that make kids feel like they're not safe is a really important goal of the, of the school community. Um, and when kids feel safe, one cognitive we know that more of their active working memory is available for learning. But when they feel safe, and when we went into your calculus class, where you're, the first thing people did was talk about the problems they had difficulty with. So that there was a mindset that it was OK to share challenges in the classroom. And I think unless that safety is there, you can't get hear feedback. And then, then if you don't hear feedback, you can't grow relationships. So looking at the school through a relational lens. And that gets back to the question of, well, are Finnish schools more diverse than the US? I think that's best practice for any school community, for any classroom. And so it really doesn't matter if there's diversity in the classroom or not. That's just best practice that's, I think, universal for all teachers to consider. So I just have to weigh in. I wasn't going to say anything, but I feel I need to uh, with, with all of these comments. Um, one of the things that I really, really wanted to see, and I didn't mention it uh, early on when I introduced myself, was about this idea of holistic development and the development of students. Um, one of the most powerful statements that was made today uh, for me in this entire uh, experience uh, was a principal saying that it's not about being number one. I don't care about being number one. He said, I care about developing our children. And so with development, I asked, well, what does that mean? He talked about having good self-esteem, having a joy of working, having a sense of fairness and responsibility, having great communication skills, which in us being here, I've never been more impressed by a group of young people who speak multiple languages, English, some even better than I do. <laughs> so, so I am just impressed. And, and then he talked about creativity. And we saw that throughout classrooms, throughout our entire experience here. So I would say that the country is really working towards not creating a, a, a huge uh, um, a core of test takers, but they're talking about creating well-shaped, well, uh, well, well smart thinking, critically thinking, reflectively thinking uh, young people. And I think uh, Finland is going to, for a long time, years to come, uh, be a country to reckon with because they're really preparing for the future. that we might be able to import. And I think this is a help disabuse me of that search. It's rather, it seems to me, a way to try to understand how the Finnish people have answered some basic questions that we all need to answer, and have been trying to do that for a few decades now, in talking about who they want to be as a people, how important are certain values in that picture, how important is independence of thought, how important is the quality of opportunity, the quality of, of treatment, fairness, transparency, uh, an ability to do a broad range of things and develop people, as you're saying, uh, across a broad range of, of capacities, artistic and, and literary and otherwise, um, and who has that voice and how you sustain that conversation among multiple organizations in society. That, to me, is a question for any society to ask, how are we answering these questions now, and who is answering those through what kinds of organizations in society? Um, is a more interesting way, it seems, for us to learn from what the Finnish have been doing and struggling with and continue to do. And thank you again to all of our tremendous hosts in helping us learn. Mm -hmm. 
And so it seemed to be about that time. Unless someone's dying to answer Rich's question about connectedness, we could continue that conversation on a connected platform, per se, on the PenFin 13 hashtag. What do you think? No, I, I think uh, it's great. I, I think that we, we have to remember that um, this is bigger than the schools. You know, I think the culture that we've been immersed in for the last couple days goes far beyond the schools. It's about the people here. Um, it's about history. It's about, um, you know, I heard religion in Sweden the other day. And I, 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 there's a lot of other things besides what happens in a school um, that's really healthy for kids and, and families here. So, you know, we're going to continue to, you know, think deeper and we're going to go to another school tomorrow. Um, we have a blog which um, all nine of us are writing posts um, every other day on. It is penfin13.wordpress.com. Uh, we're also tweeting from the schools, um, like many connected educators that are on this um, chat um, video uh, do every day in their schools. Um, and we're using hashtag penfin13. Um, so I encourage you to continue to follow along. Please comment on the blogs. You know, our students here are really working hard to share out, you know, very transparently what we're seeing, hearing, experiencing. Um, and it's, this is really a powerful experience for all of us as we, you know, continue to look for ways that we can help children in the United States. And, and uh, this trust piece is really, really something that uh, I think all of us agree we can do a lot better job on. So thank you very much, Edutopia, uh, the University of Helsinki, um, and everyone that has you know, traveled three hours to get here tonight, um, as well as the tech support here at uh, University of Helsinki and all of uh, the, the students for, uh, for making this happen. Thank you. And thank you, Joe, by the way. And, and our panelists down below, thanks for taking time out of your day. It's, it's really nice to not only have a conversation in Helsinki, but have all the different stakeholders of education represented so well down below. So, um, thanks again, everyone, and if you missed any part of this conversation, you can actually go to the YouTube channel or go to the Google Plus, Edutopia's Google Plus, and you can rewatch it again. And then, like Joe said, you can continue the conversation on Twitter at PenFin13. Uh, All right, thanks, everybody. Really, really, for not having any kind of agenda or plan or rehearsal or anything. <laughs> you, guys, you guys really did great. You know, the technology worked, and oftentimes it doesn't, you know, for one reason or another. So, thank you so much for being here. And I gotta be honest with you if, if I were to make this request um, in the United <laughs> States Probably. the day before to use a facility like this. Um, for an hour <laughs> with no supervision or anything like that, there would not be the trust <laughs> to, to say, you know what, that's a good idea. We would. We'll, we'll test that next yeah. summer. When I come over, yeah. 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 we'll test that. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think um, it's safe to say that you are all welcome to you know, visit um, us and continue interacting with us, whether online or, or physically, because we've really appreciated everything that you've kind of done for us, just opening the doors of learning for us over the last couple of days. So. So uh, thank you.